already know just where I be, dog. I ain't being cocky, but Philly, what I'm reppin'. Watch me check it like it's hockey. I ain't tryna get it twisted. If you get it, then you got me. If you with it, cool. If not, I'll treat you like a Tamagotchi. I'ma let you down point. Yeah, I never did. What's going on guys, j Hoyt back with you today. Today's video, like I promised in the last two, we are going to be talking about the HUT ratings. So if you guys didn't know, as it is the release date of NHL 18 worldwide, I got the game a couple days early with the version that I ordered, so I've been playing for the past three days. So, with me playing so far, the thing I have noticed, and I've said it in multiple videos since, the pace of play is extremely slow. So, that also means that the HUT ratings are really low, and a lot of the players that are usually pretty fast are really slow. So, I want to talk about, you know, what the ratings should be. I know, you know, EA wants to release, you know, more cards and, you know, have upgraded cards. I get that. Marketing, blah, 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 money. But... Come on. I mean, you're releasing a game that's like the real NHL that's supposed to be really fast and this game is really slow. So, ratings. Let's talk about them real quick. So, if you look at the like the top superstars in the league. So, you got your Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin. I guess even if we want to throw Connor McDavid in there. Kind of give those three as like that superstar. When you think of hockey, most people think of, you know, those, I guess, three guys. And then... You have that like tier one, right? Then tier two is like, you know, your Eric Carl. No, I'd put Eric Carlson up there, honestly. And then, you know, Brent Burns maybe. But other than that, you have your lower tier superstars, I'll call them. Such as, you know, Steven Stamkos, Jamie Benn. Uh, who else was I just thinking of? John Tavares. You know, those types of players that are still superstars, but they're like under the complete elite players if that makes sense so you have your Sidney Crosby just say as should be about 95 like minimum because look at any other game who are the top players in those games what are their overalls I guarantee they're in the 90s I guarantee it if not you know mid 90s I guarantee it's high 90s and the, I don't know what other games are like for like an ultimate team. I haven't played any other ultimate team besides NHL and FIFA. And even with FIFA, it's like, okay, it starts out as like still a good card. Like the top player is what? Messi or Ronaldo? I believe Messi starts out at like a 93 and then he's gotten more cards since then. But instead of giving, you know, the same players new cards like every single time there's a new card out give it to other players or if you know if it's always the same guys yeah it's okay it's cool yeah you want to get your top players those cards but you still have to you know i guess spread the wealth because if a player is doing just as good or you know just under what those superstars are doing give it to other people and with you know crosby probably should be like a 90 probably even like a 96 at this point like 96 plus i'd say then have Ovechkin, maybe one overall less. Then have your lower tier superstars is like 90 to 94. And then you have, you know, your just really good players. Like Jack Eichel, Matt Duchesne, uh, Nathan McKinnon I put up there, you know, Austin Matthews. You know, just, just to name a few. And obviously I'm forgetting, you know, lots of big name players here. But I'm just trying to give you an example. So those guys that are you know, on the verge of being superstars, and now they're just stars, put them from, like, 88 to 90, right? And have those players, you know, know they're stars, but not at that, you know, lower tier superstar, and not at elite superstar level. And with that little difference, it's like, okay, if I'm picking McDavid, I want him to speed past everyone, you know, in good playmaking. I don't want him super slow, skating around the ice like he's, like, John Scott, and, you know, being super slow. I don't want that. I want fast Conor McDavid. I want fast, you know, whoever the heck else is fast. Like, I want fast players. I want fast gameplay, and that's what I want. Now, other than that, after you go from, you know, those elite stars to the lower tier superstars to, I guess, the stars, I don't know... There's so many, you know, different types of players in the league. It's like, it's really hard to narrow it down to such like little categories. 
But then you have like your just like good players, which are like like a Matt Zuccarello type player. That's like he's good, but I don't consider him like a star player. Like when I think of like the best players in the world, I don't consist consider him there. I consider him a really good player, but I don't feel like he's that superstar on that team, if that makes sense. So after you go past like Zuccarello, then you have like your third line fill-in guys at like 85 or 83 through 85 i guess overall then after that you have your fourth line players from like 80 to 83 82 ish area right it should have separation between fourth line guys and first line guys and not at three overall difference now if you guys watched my pack opening yesterday before the 1v1 versus my brother you guys know that i kind of was dissing ea a little bit saying that Jaden shorts got a better overall than Kevin Shattenkirk and yes it was only one overall difference but come on I mean Kevin Shattenkirk's probably what top 10 in the league for a defenseman if not top 15 and he's getting the same as like a second third line player that just made his like like consistent debut what like two years ago like you gotta have superstars you can't have, you know, like five superstars and everyone else be 83 overall. It just doesn't work like that. So then after that, then you have all your AHL guys, your call-up guys, you know, in the 70s. And all of your bronze juniors guys, you know, even lower. But then, you know, once you get to the foreign leagues, you know, in Sweden, Russia, those are kind of hard to put into ratings because we don't see how good they are. And with that i love having them in the game but it's just so hard to rate them so even if you gave them all just silver cards that way they're still i guess usable but you're not gonna find like certain guys that are like lower tier like russian players in the like competing for nhl spots like that just doesn't make sense so if you have like datsuk for example and you know what i think he's playing in russia of some sort you know, if he's a high-rated card, okay, I get it. You know, the top-rated Russian players maybe have 80-pluses on them. You know, maybe more depending on who they are. But if you're just going to have everyone as, like, seven or like 79 through, like, 85 is all of, like, the good AHL and some random foreign guys all through that, you know, range, you shouldn't have that. You should have... All of your NHL guys, you know, separated so that there's a little bit of a skill gap, but not so much to where you have to have the best players in the world in order to compete. Now, in this game, I just got done playing this, and this guy's got pretty much every superstar in the game, except for, like, the very, very top elite ones. And, you know, Crosby, uh, Carlson, McDavid, and Ovechkin. I'm pretty sure I saw every other name in this. Now, it's what? Like, I mean, I don't know what version this guy got, but I was playing Division 10, and we're two days into it. And I don't know if there's a way to get it even before that or not, but, like, you, you must be really, really lucky to get players like that. Because the best player I've packed so far was, what, 84? So, you know, that's not that good, you know, in 84. My brother, who packed two carry prices in two days, two of them, 89, the best overall goaltender in the game, he packed two of them. Not only did he pack two of carry price, he packed a Tyler Sagan, uh, and I don't remember exactly who he had, but, like, come on. I mean, you have to, you know, work for something. Like, you shouldn't be putting out two carry prices to the same person in the same two days. Like, I almost wish there was a system to where if you draft it or if you pack a player, you can't draft him for, like, the next, like, three packs. Like, imagine that. Like, that'd be amazing. Now, I'm not saying, you know, make it known what that number is. But at least have it so it, it changes every time. So you're not just packing the same players over and over and over and over and over again like you did in 17. Because if I'm opening packs, I want to get new players, obviously. Am I bound to get duplicates? Of course. But I want to get someone good. I mean, the best person I got was, what, 84 Klingberg? And there was also 84 Saad, 84, uh, who else? 
There was a couple of them, but 84 overall is the best player I got in what? Like, let's see, there was what? Two on the opening day. Then you had what? Two, no, you had five more. So let's just say about 10 packs. And the best thing I got was an 84. I mean, if you compare it to last year, John Klingberg was what? 88? I think if I remember correctly. So the best overall player dropped four overall that I could have packed. Does that not seem ridiculous to anyone else? Like, I get it if they're trying to go for, you know, a super slow game this year. I get that. I hate it, but I get it. But come on, I mean, you're the sports company that makes games, and you're telling me this is the best game you could have came up with, and the best ratings you could have come up with? Like, you've had all year, and it's pretty much the same layout for everything, so it's not like you completely redid the game. So you had all year to do ratings, to do things in the game, to make the pace of play the way you want it. And the amount of times you play tested it and, you know, you have everyone that Game Changers program. Like, you can't tell me this is the best option for HUT ratings. Like, even if they were down, you know, like, one or two, that's understandable. But to have, like, superstars that are, like, five or six, maybe even, like, up to, like, eight overall lower than what they should be. That's pretty ridiculous. Like, when I think of the best player in the game, I don't think of an 89 overall. Like, that's... Like, you're thinking of the best player in the sport. Like, who's the best football player, right? Everyone will probably say, you know, maybe Tom Brady, or if they're just super biased and don't really care, they'll say someone from their own team. Tom Brady and Madden's probably, like, a 95+. plus. I would assume, anyway. If not, a 90+, plus, like, absolute minimum. And if not, then they're screwing up, too. Like... I want the best player in the game to have the best stats. And then the second best player, the second best stats. Or very, very similar to that first person. I don't want 89 overall as my best player. Like, yeah, I get it. You want to have, you know, cards to release later. But come on. So on that note, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you guys did enjoy, hit that like button down below. Comment what you guys think of NHL 18 and how you guys are liking it on the first day of the worldwide release. And let me know that down in the comments below and subscribe for more. Anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Just a couple kids living on our own. Some are nice, love them how they take so long. Run with the feet.